Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a delicious gluten-free naan bread. I start out by measuring 360 grams of gluten-free all-purpose flour. This is slightly more than two and a half cups. I'm using a blend that has xanthan gum in it, but if your flour doesn't have xanthan gum, you'll need to add some into the mix. I like using GF Jewel's all-purpose gluten-free flour for yeasted doughs because it has a high protein and starch content, which really helps support the structure of the dough. This is necessary for the dough to hold its shape once the yeast rises and during baking, because there's no gluten to support the rise. After the flour is measured, I add a half teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of baking powder. Then I measure out one cup of water and one tablespoon of sugar and stir them together until the sugar dissolves. This is going to bloom the active dry yeast. If you're using instant yeast, you can add it directly into the flour mix and you don't have to bloom it. I heat the water to 110 degrees Fahrenheit before adding in a packet of active dry yeast. While the active dry yeast is blooming, I add one egg white plus one whole egg into the flour mix. Gluten-free naan is typically a pretty sticky dough, so adding an extra egg white is going to help with the texture of this bread. Next, I add one third cup of unflavored Greek yogurt and three tablespoons of ghee. If you don't have ghee, you can use three tablespoons of softened butter. Once the active dry yeast has bloomed and there's visible signs of yeast life, I slowly pour the water and active dry yeast into the mix. I pour this in while I have the mixer turning. I have the mixer on low speed and I'm pouring the water in slowly just to make sure that nothing splashes out of the bowl. Once all of the liquid has been added in, I turn the speed up to medium high. I let this whip together for two to three minutes. The mix should look pretty fluffy and sticky once it's finished whipping. This is the texture that you're looking for. I use a rubber spatula to get all of the dough out of the mixing bowl. Then I'm going to turn the dough out into an oiled bowl for this to rise. I spray the top of the dough with oil so that it doesn't dry out, and then I cover the bowl and let this rise until the dough has increased in size by half. This typically takes about an hour. Now that the dough has risen, I'm going to portion this out into eight equal sized pieces. I turn the dough out into my hand so that I can zero the scale with the bowl on it. Once I set the bowl down, I press tear on the scale. Then I put the dough back into the bowl. Now I'm able to see only the weight of the dough. In this case, the dough weighed 796 grams. I want eight equal pieces, so I divide 796 by eight. This gives me 99.5 grams per piece. My starting weight is 796 grams, so when I subtract 99 grams from that, I get 697 grams. Now I'm going to remove dough from the bowl until my scale tells me that there's 697 grams left. Then I continue subtracting 99 grams from the total weight until I have 8 equal sized dough balls. Before I drop each of the balls of dough onto the silicone mat, I place the bottom into a little bit of flour just so that it doesn't stick to the mat. Now I take the dough balls one at a time, lightly roll it in flour, and then press them out flat. I press each dough ball out until it's about a quarter inch to a half inch thick. I found that it's easiest to press these flat with my hand rather than a rolling pin, but you can certainly use a rolling pin too. While I'm making the first couple pieces of naan bread, I have my skillet heating up. I actually use my cast iron griddle to cook these, and it fits two at a time, but you can also use a cast iron skillet on a stovetop or a nonstick pan on a stovetop. I take the first two pieces of naan bread and place them onto an oiled griddle. I bake the naan bread on medium high heat for two minutes on each side. I set a timer for the naan bread, and then I continue pressing the dough balls flat. This way, when the first two pieces of naan bread are done cooking, I'll have two more made and ready to go. After the first side of the naan bread has cooked for two minutes, I flip it over and cook the next side of the bread for an additional two minutes. After those two minutes have passed, I flip the bread again and cook it for one minute. 
Then I flip the bread again and cook it for one more minute. So by the end of the cooking process, each side of the naan bread has cooked for a total of three minutes. I check to make sure that the bottom side has a dark enough color, and then I take it off the griddle and put it on the plate to make room for the next piece of naan bread. Once all the naan bread is finished cooking, you can eat it immediately, or you can keep it fresh for up to three days. After three days, the gluten-free naan bread tends to get pretty spongy in texture. Gluten-free naan bread does freeze really well, and I like to freeze this to always have some on hand. Thanks for watching this video on how to make gluten-free naan bread. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and as always, like and subscribe to see more content.